coroner's inquest into CHSLD Heron has wrapped up for now. A few more days of hearings have been added in October. Now, some of the witness testimony we've been hearing has been devastated, devastating. We've heard about the horrid conditions the residents at the facility were left in during the first wave of the pandemic. Jay Turnbull spoke to some family members about how the hearings have affected them. Olga Garekis was among the first to die during those chaotic few weeks at Heron. While most workers stayed home, she was basically left to fend for herself. Her final moments were likely spent alone. Uh, we suspect that it was dehydration, um, which was a very, very strange thing to hear because to, me, to my ears, honestly, that sounds like neglect. Carniela visited his grandmother as often as he could, but wishes he could have seen her more, especially during her final days. That's what leads into the, the feeling of guilt that we're all feeling now about having not done enough. What families have heard during the inquiry has been hard to stomach. Seniors being left unfed, without water, and lying in their own feces, urine, and vomit for days. I think it's uh, disgusting, and I'm super pissed off about it. Peter Barrett has also been following the inquiry closely. His father, Leon, died from dehydration just two days after arriving at Heron. It's gut-wrenching. Uh, it's just it's very painful to hear the suffering that the people had to go through. Barrett says not knowing what his father's last moments were like is frustrating, but at the same time... I think it's better to not know. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to know the, the sordid details. It would be just a bit too much to handle. Peter Whelan was able to transfer his parents out of Heron, but his mother was there during the worst stretch, while residents, as we heard described at the inquest, were dropping like flies. He says the testimony has been maddening, but he's taking comfort wherever he can find it. The testimony that really moved me was like the nurses from St. Mary's who volunteered to go in on the, on the 8th and the 9th of April. Those are my heroes. Those are the people who, when they saw a fire, they went running in with buckets. Carniello has been trying not to focus on the horrid details of the testimony. He, like most families, wants to see change. I hope that we learn that the, the for-profit long-term care is, is unsustainable. It's not something that uh, uh, treats people fairly. Jay Turnbull, CBC News, Montreal.